Hey there. I'm pretty tired. I'll probably crash after making this video. Um, but someone had sent me a link to an, an Adam Kokesh video, whom at one point I was subscribed to, but his, his whole right-wing kind of thing just kind of turned me off eventually. And his whole, uh, you know, it's, it goes back into that whole, you know, taxes are theft at gunpoint and therefore they shouldn't, shouldn't exist. Um, get rid of the government. Okay, okay, yeah, right, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it was a video of him pointing out some of the racism that is within Black Lives Matter. Now, some of the ways that, that Adam Kokesh goes about things, it's like, it's like, oh, well, it, I, I couldn't possibly be confrontational. I'm, I'm calm. I'm calm. This is my constitutional right. I can't possibly con be be confrontational. No, I, I can't be stalking because this is a public place. It doesn't matter whether I'm following you around and bugging you over and over again. Oh, that's not harassment. I'm being calm and this is a public place. You know, there, there's some bullshit kind of going on in that and he tends to do, he has that similar attitude. Like, okay, there are people that make these, these, these videos where they will go to police checkpoints on purpose and really just challenge their constitutional rights you know, challenge the officer about their constitutional rights and just be as, as obtuse as possible to the point where if the officer messes up even the tiniest bit and they're just tired of the person being obtuse, oh, you violated my constitutional right. It's like, oh, come on, you know. I get that you're trying to make a point, but there's, a, there's just... You don't need to be that fucking obtuse about it. You know? Make your point without being so fucking obtuse. Treat the officer with at least a little bit of respect, you know? But anyway, back to the subject at hand. One of the problems with when there is any group, at, at any more, the way that it is, any group that... You know, or a demographic that has been historically oppressed for at least a couple decades now, we have went out of our way to make sure that we never tell anyone from an, an oppressed demographic, no, no, you can't, you can't do that. And it's now to the point where the people that are making these declarations of white cis male privilege are the ones who are actually acting the most privileged. They may not be uh, in a privileged class, but they are acting the most privileged. And because we got these, we have these new definitions of words, you can't even call them racist for it. Some black person can call someone a crack. You stupid cracker, you... And just be just foul to someone purely based on race. And you try to call them racist. I'm not racist. Black people can't be racist. And it's just like... What do you do... What, how do you tackle the situation where people are acting absolutely and completely privileged? What do you do? It's, it's, it's quite a, a, a situation. And what happens when a parent has kids that are acting up really bad but they never, ever, ever tell them, no, no, you need to knock that off. They never get told that they're wrong. They never get told to, to stop any sort of behavior. 
what happens to those kids? Well, they get worse and worse and worse. And the situation we have here is that very thing. There are some demographics, ones that have been historically oppressed, who now feel that they can be as nasty to people as possible and be nasty to people based on the fact that they happen to be a different demographic than they are. And we're just supposed to go, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, mm, oh. You know, and, and that's where this element comes into place, where people talk about white guilt. And if you're going to be a racist piece of shit to someone because they're white, or, or a cisphobic person because they're cis, or a heterophobic person because they're straight, and you're just going to have all this attitude, you're, well, you're just so privileged. No, you're the one that's acting privileged. When you become exactly what it is that you complain about, you've pretty much forfeited your ability to complain and hold any validity. And that's what's been going on all over the place. And it seems that eventually um, there's going to be a wake-up call for some of these people, but what is it going to take? How far are things going to get before they have this wake-up call? Sometimes I've kind of wondered, and it's, it's a terrible thought, but, you know, maybe we need something like a Trump presidency. And if we could survive that anyway, of course, as I've been really thinking about it more, it's like, well, do you really think Trump will actually be able to implement some of the things he wants? Or do you think it's going to be blocked? I mean, not even, there's a number of Republicans who don't like what Trump is. And the Democrats certainly don't like what Trump is. So don't you think that a lot of the things he wants to shove forth just won't get any support? And unless he sits there, and he, unless he abuses his presidential powers, well, anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. It, maybe we need something like a Trump presidency where people actually have to worry about real problems and not this bullshit of, uh, oh, microaggressions or whatever, you know. Maybe that's kind of what needs to kick people in the butt to, uh, to realize, oh, I guess there are really much more serious things to worry about. I sure, certainly don't want a Trump presidency. I still think it would be disastrous no matter what. Whether he does terrible things or whether he's, what do you call that, a lame duck president where he can't get anything done. And e either one. It's just, it would suck. But how are we going to get these people who think that they can't act privileged because they're not in a privileged class. How can we get these people to realize, hey, you are acting 10 times as worse as what you are claiming the people who are privileged act? Don't really know what more to say about that.